Now, I'm going to show you what they look like before we even make them. Here's some examples. Uh, here's, a, here's a Santa. And uh, they're antiqued. Can you tell that they're a, little, they're a little stained? They're actually made that way. And here's a little bear, a little bell hanging off, but holding a candy cane. And then I have another little girl bear holding a bell. And look at this one. This is very unique. This is a little bunny rabbit holding a basket. And you'll notice it has a little rose with a little um, green leaflet around it. She's wearing a little green dress. And then, of course, we have a papa bear holding a wreath wearing coveralls or overalls. And so I'm going to show you how to make the little bears. And then I'm going to give you the inf information of the ingredients that you will need. And I guarantee you, you have them in your house. Uh, the only thing you need to possibly go buy maybe is the Mod Podge, which is the you use to uh, your finished coat over the product when you're done. I think everything else you might already have around the house. But you'll know because as we get going, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, we need a big bowl, and I've already measured out the ingredients. Okay, And so the first thing you want to do is you want to take two cups of flour in a bowl. And then one cup of salt. I've already pre-measured these, by the way. And one cup of cold water, very important. And make sure that you measure exactly. It will make a big difference on the dough consistency. And you want the dough to be like Play-Doh when you're working with it. Otherwise, if it's too gooey and sticky, start sticking to your fingers and it just doesn't work well. So I'm going to mix this a little bit right now. And it starts to get dry, a little dry. Don't add any more water to it because the more drier it looks, the better the dough is going to be. And matter of fact, there's also a way to make Play-Doh. Maybe I can share that with you next time so that the kids will have something to keep playing with over and over again to bake. So while I'm baking this, I always like to preheat my oven, and you do that to 275, no, no more than that, 275. And if you notice, it just became really doughy. And now we just kind of knead it. See how that looks like a big dough for a pie, doesn't it? But don't eat it because it's salt. <laughs> it's not sugar. It's not um, eatable, edible. So I'm just gonna knead this dough and just until that doesn't stick to your hands. And this makes enough dough for about, I'd say about 10 ornaments, depending on what you make. If you make a big item, then of course it takes more dough. If you make small items, it takes less dough. That's only obvious. So, okay, here's my dough. Now I'm ready to color it. We do not paint the little uh, dough ornaments. We put the paint in the dough. Okay, now, there are several colors that I like. Now, you can pick your own colors, but I normally use green, blue, brown, and red. I use five colors. I don't need white because the dough is already white, so I don't color it when I use white. So I'm going to start breaking it up in pieces, and I'm just going to do a little bit because I'm just going to show you a demonstration today because I, I can make 15 ornaments, and we're only going to make a couple today. So I'm going to take uh, one of these balls, and the first thing I'm going to do is color it with the brown. And all you do is you want to put it, do it over your sink, okay? And you just squirt it right on top of the dough like that. Wipe it in. Now, if you don't like getting your hands messy, you could probably use gloves, or if you have kids, have them do this part. They might like it. So then you just kind of do this. You you would just squish it down, roll it together, and do this. And, and that way, the, the color gets into the dough. Because when you take it apart, you need to, it can't be white on the inside. It needs to be brown through and through. Now I have a brown ball. It's perfect. 
So what I do is I take a baggie and I pop the ball inside there and set it aside. And then I'm going to wash my hands because you don't want to mix your brown with the next color. So I'm ahead and finished uh, coloring the rest of the dough. I have green, red, and of course white, and blue and brown. Now what I do is I take a piece of foil, and I've used this before, I just keep using the foil over and over again, and you simply place it down on the table there. And what I've also done is I have a couple of little bowls of things. Water in case my finger needs to be dampened a little bit. And a little flour if things start sticking. I dip my finger in there and I can get to it a little bit. The water is good for adhesives when we start adding the little pieces like eyeballs and the seeds and, and the beads to it. So you take a piece of dough about this size. I don't know, it's, what is that, an inch and a half ball? You make a round ball and you just kind of make a teardrop. We're going to make a, a, a little bear with overalls, okay? So make a teardrop and you kind of just push it down a little bit on the front. See how that looks? It's like a little oval. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some legs on it and you take a couple of balls and you, you, everything starts out with a little ball. And then you roll it like, a, like about a little piece like that. And you just plop it at the bottom. You see how it's starting to form a little leg? And you squish it up the bottom, make a little bottom of the foot. Do the same thing with the other. You just roll it out like this, squish it up, and then just squish it up like that. And what you'll do is you'll just you know, make like sew marks. Like it's going to be like a little stuffed bear. So you just make these little sew marks on the bottom, like you see on a real stuffed animal. See how that works? And then I just kind of make the stitching line down the leg on each side. See? Cute, huh? Okay, and so also you'll want to do it all the way up the middle of the bear because that's where the bear is sewn together. I'm going to make a long arm like this. You kind of make it skinnier at the top, fatter at the bottom, and you just stick it to the side. Don't do it all the way to the top because that's where the head goes. Just do it off to the side a little bit and then down like this, okay? And then because on the bear paw it's got little uh, sew marks, you just simply make the same design as you did on the bottom of the foot. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other arm on. This time I'm going to add a little um, a little Christmas tree. See this little Christmas tree? You can find little odds and ends. See I've got a whole little plate of these. Uh, little blocks and a plastic Santa Claus some buttons you can, and um, pine cone. So you can just find all kinds of things. And because it's only on 270, most of the things, actually I've never found anything except the real, real soft, plasticky kind of stuff, kind of stuff melt in the oven. So most of the things, things do not melt in the oven. So then you put the, nether, the other arm on it, but this time I'm going to take the little tree, squish it into the body, and wrap the arm around it like he's holding the tree. Look at that. How, how cute that is. And this one again, I'm going to put the little holes in the side to make it look like the little pad of the hand. Okay. And it bakes right all together and it sticks in there. I don't have to worry about it falling apart because it's within, the tree is within the body of the bear. Now the fun part, make the head. Adds a little creativity to it. So then you just make a little ball and this is a, your judgment, you know. You just kind of look at it and say, oh, is that head, that ball too big or is that too small? Well, in my case, that ball was a little too big. So I like a little head because I put these big ears on them. So then you just kind of shove the head, shove the head right onto the top of the body. Just like that. Now we're going to add the ears. You take two little balls and I, like, I just get one piece and then I tear it in half. And I kind of been doing this for a while. So I just roll two balls and then I stick the ears on the side of the head like that. See? Stick them right there. And then I take the, the toothpick 
and I just dot the little hole, the little sew marks for the inside of the ears. And then, because the face is sewn together, I just put the little holes all the way up the middle of the face, like that. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put on the little face circle, which is the little white spot in the middle of the bear's face. You take a little bit of white, and you just flatten it down like a little flat circle, and just drop it right just drop it right on the face, see? Just like that. And now, to make the little look of a bear, you just take the toothpick and you poke holes all the way down to about the middle. And then to make the little mouth, you just go like this, side to side. See, isn't that cute? All right. The next thing we wanna do is get our little beads. You'll want to get some little black beads. You might have to pick these up at a little craft store. But you, you get the little beads and you need three of them for the bear. Two eyes and a nose. This is where you need to use the water because after a while the dough starts to get a little dry. So you use your finger, drop off, get a little water on your finger. That way you can pick the bead up with the finger. And you just drop it in the middle of the nose like that and you just push it down with the toothpick. A little bit more water, drop the eye next to the white on both sides. Take the toothpick and just kind of gently push it down into the head of the bear. Now, it's pretty much done. Isn't that the cutest thing? And so now in order to hang it, you can use a uh, paper clip and you can just shove it into the top of the head but because my bear is small I want to use a little wire so I grabbed some old wire from the garage you know any kind of wire just something that's stiff you can even use a Christmas tree hook uh, that you hang the ornaments on because those are just about the same consistency as this wire and then you just take it and bend it like a hook you get the, the head a little wet because if you try to push it through dry, it starts to squish the head down. So then you'll want to just poke it down through the top of the head like that. Just enough to leave enough at the top so that it becomes a hook. Isn't that cute? I think it's so cute. And then all I do when I get done with this is I put it in the oven. First I put it on a, a baking sheet. And I just pop it in the oven at 275. There's a little bear holding a button. It looks like a bell. And I happened to find a little bow and I just stuck that on the side. So it, that was a little tiny button. And so you just kind of be creative. This one's going to be very unique. This one, uh, you see I have a toothpick. But it's going to be a fishing rod because I made little fishies. And I'm going to tie it with string and hang the fish off the end. All right, now I'm going to make the next one, and I've got a little piece of brown for the body. Again, make a big circle, and you just plop it down. And so the next thing I'm going to do is make the coveralls. Okay, so I'm going to use the blue, and if the dough starts to get a little sticky, stop what you're doing and go wash your hands. It might be that your hands are dry from working on it earlier. So what you want to do is you make a little blue bib part and then you flatten out the, the rest of it because that's the part that's going to, you're going to push around the body. So you just lay it right on top of the body and then kind of just mold the rest of the blue all the way around, see all the way around the bottom part of the teardrop. See how that works? Don't make it too thick though because then it takes a long time to bake. You got to make sure it gets baked all the way through and through. So here's my little bib. See? Now what we want to do is we're going to make the legs and you still use the same blue because the, you know the bear's legs have pants on it. You make a circle, a little ball, and you flatten it out like that. Well, that's a little too fat. You just kind of put the, the leg there. And then you get some more for the other leg. 
and you squish it next to each other like that. You want to make them even as much as possible, you know, on both sides. Okay? And then you take some more brown and you make the little feet. You just stick little balls on the bottom of the pants. That makes the, the, the feet. You take the toothpick and you make those little dots again to show the sew line. I've had certain, and sometimes I would put little heart designs on the bottom of the feet. Those are also a cute idea. Now we're going to make the top part of the bear. But before you put the straps on the bear, you got to put the arms on because the, the straps go over the arms. So you want to build up. So then you roll out another piece. This is for the arm. And again, you put it close not all the way to the top, but off to the side. And this time, I'm going to have the bear hold a bell. Okay? So I just put the bell in here and then just wrap the arm around it. See? And just, just push the bell in there so that it sticks. Just make sure it adheres and goes like that. And then I just put the little toothpick holes for the hands. Okay? And now we're going to do the other arm. like that. You can have the other arm hold something, but as a matter of fact, what we're going to do on this arm is we're going to have him hold another bell in this hand, but this time I'm going to have him hold the bell um, with the hook. The same hook that I use on the head, I just kind of curve it like this, and then I take, in this case, I'm going to use a little little bulb decoration and I'm going to put it through there like that and then what you do is you just it's hanging on there already you just shove it up through the hand very carefully like that so now it's going to hang there now I'm ready for the shoulder straps because you want to put the shoulder straps on before you do the head remember we work from the bottom up and you just make two little pieces and you just if it's too long you know cut off the end but I just plop it right on there and then I'll make the other side and I'll plop it right on there see now normally on an overalls you have little snap button. So I have two little red beads that I have and I'm just going to put that right, squish it right in there. And if it if it's too dry, use a little water. Now we're ready for the head. And the head we do the same way as we did the other one. Just roll it out, make a round ball. And then you just plop it on there. You can flatten it out just a tiny bit, but still give it enough consistency to, uh, you know, be round there. See? And then, this is the ears. Take some brown, roll them up. You can do one at a time, but I just like to do both. I can feel how big they are. I can tell that they're the same size. And then I just pop them on there. Isn't that cute? Look at that. Yes, you can do this. <laughs> I give classes on this, and um, by the time people leave, they've pretty much mastered on how to do this. Okay, so then you just poke the holes again in the ears to make the little round circle part of the inner of the ear. And then again, you poke up to the middle uh, and all the way up to the front because that's where the bear is sewn. The other thing we didn't do, and I want to show you how to do, is you make the pockets and you simply poke the pocket design in. Because see what happens, the reason why it's really a good idea to poke them in there is when we stain it, when we go to stain it, the stain drops into it and blackens that area and then the outline shows up a lot better. Okay, now the last thing we do is the face. You take a little white ball, roll it up, flatten it down, 
and then just plop it right in the middle of the face. And if you have to squish it around a little bit to make it work and make it a perfect circle, then you just do that. Okay, and so now I'm going to make that design so that it has a, a mouth, like I did before. Use your toothpick. And now we're ready for the beads. Three beads. and add a little water to my finger so that I can use it to drop the bead on the nose, drop the beads on the eyes. And again, use your Q-tip, your Q-tip. I keep calling them Q-tip. Your, um, you know what this is. <laughs> Toothpick. Stick that in there. And then you just push the eyeballs down in so that they stay like that. And then of course we want to make it a hanger. So I use the little wire that I've created. I cut a few up and I just bend it. Bend it together. Then you just pop it down the middle, the top of the head. See, straight down the top of the head like that. It's ready to go in the oven. Isn't that cute? Okay, now we're ready to make a girl. A little, oh, a little girl bear. Again, we start out with a ball. This we always start out with a body. Just plop it down, just like we did before, and you just make that teardrop effect for the the neck and the arms. And you make the little. Since we're going to be putting a dress on it, you don't need the top part of the body to be real thick. You want to push down on it a little bit, but you want to leave the bottom up a little higher because that gives the dress the effect once we put the dough on top of it of uh, flaring out okay all right so then we're going to do the legs remember we do the body then the legs you make a round ball then you roll it out make a little fat leg and you plop it up there like that and now i'm going to use a toothpick Poke the holes again. And you want to do it as you're creating it. Don't wait to poke the holes at the very last because the dough starts to dry out. Right? And again, you poke the holes down the sides to be the stitch marks. And you also poke the holes all the way down the center. I'm going to make a red dress. So you make a ball about that size. You squish it all the way flat. Okay? Like that. And then you just lay it on top of the body. And and you want to stretch it out like so to wrap around the side. Don't worry about what the top looks like. We want to get the bottom to be kind of flippant. See how that we can do that? And then you want the dough all the way to go all the way to the side. You can even take a piece of white dough and line the bottom of the dress as well to make it look like a little fur jacket. And then you just kind of squish it so that you make room for the arms on top. See how I did a little triangle? All right, now we're ready for the arms. And again, it's part of the dress. So I'm going to make red arm sleeves. And what you do is you make a ball you roll it and you make it kind of flat the bottom because that's where the little arm is going to stick out and you just put the little arm down see how that works just like that and I'll make another arm it's always fun to try to get both arms the same size <laughs> believe me it takes a lot of practice all right so now I've got my two arms and now I'm going to add the little hands. So you take two little balls and just put them on the end of the dress sleeve, like that. And you take the toothpick, put the little holes on the sides to make the stitch marks again. This is just a norm. What I want to do though is I want to add something to it. I think in this case I'm going to add a, I have this little plastic Santa. And so I'm going to have the bear hold the Santa. And so since I've already put the arm down, I'm going to just gently, I'll use this side, and I'm going to gently bring up the arm to go around the Santa. 
See, it's just dough, so you can pretty much change the shape. See how easy that was? I should have did it before I put it whole thing together, but uh, we can always do that. See how easy that was to change it? Look. Isn't that cute? So then you just put the little holes around the hand again. I'm going to put a really cute collar, a little white collar on the neck before I put the head on. So you make a take a little white or whatever color you want it and you flatten it down and you make the shape of a collar. Just flatten it down and then you just set it on top of there. See, like that. You can play with it a little bit and shape it. Then I get another piece and flatten it out and put that next to it. Okay. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of design to it. And so I'm going to indent it a little bit on the bottom to make it look like fur. Okay, so now I'm going to put the head on it. Take a little bit of dough, put it in a circle again, and then you just plop it right on the top. You want to make sure that it pushes down on top of the collar area of that. At this point, you can actually make a bunny rabbit. You notice that I made a bunny rabbit earlier. All you do is you squeeze the head together and add a red nose and do the same and then add the bunny ears and, and it's the same, everything else is the same. Okay, so now we're going to do the ears. Now, if you want the instructions and the recipe on this, you can just send me an email or give me a phone call. The information is at the end of the show and I'll be happy to send that to you. So I'm making the ears. Okay. So it's coming together very nicely. And then I'm going to poke the holes again. And I'm also going to poke the hole of the sewing line up the middle of the face again, all the way around the top of the head. All right. Get that dough off my hands. It's a little sticky. Okay, put us make a circle, flatten it down, and put it right on the front of the bear's face. And then we're going to again poke a design down the middle. If you mess up, just take the ball off and start over again. Or use a little water and cover up your mistake by rubbing it. Okay. All right. And now again, we're going to use three black beads. I'm going to wet my fingers because they're dry, definitely. And I'm going to poke that nose right in the middle and the eyes off to the side. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to decorate the dress up just a teeny bit, okay? I'm going to use some white beads because I have a white collar, and you can use all kinds of different things. Um, you can use a sequins, you can use other kinds of beads, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little indention into the dress because I found that if I try to push the bead down, it pushes the body down. This way, it doesn't push the body down and the dress stays at the same consistency. So I'm gonna wet my finger and then just wet those holes, drop the seed, the size of the hole that I made for the seed and drop it into the hole. That way it just goes right in and plus, it, it adheres to it better. All right, now I'm gonna take the, the hook again like that. Okay. Now this time I'm going to add a little bit of color. I'm going to add a rose. I'm going to add a rose to it. Now I'm going to take this, put this aside for a minute. I'm going to show you how to make a rose. I'm going to make sure my, my surface is clean. And you want small because just, you, don't, you don't need much. So you just take two little pieces about this size and you roll them up and you just drop them like that. It doesn't matter what it looks like because you're going to use a cute, your, your um, toothpick and just make an indentation of the middle to make it look like the leaf. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna do the rose part. This takes a little bit of practice. You roll it out into a long string like this, okay? And then you just push it down just very ever so lightly. Make it a little flat. And then this is the fun part of the flip of your fingers. You just roll it like this. Isn't that cute? Look at that. And you just kind of tack it around underneath. Isn't that precious? I just put the bear in the oven and so now we're going to go back to the bears that I pulled out earlier and now they're cool enough to continue working with them. So the next thing we're going to want to do after you've pulled them out of the oven, and by the way, how long do you cook them I guess is the question. You cook them for several hours. Now what I mean by that is I found that the size that I'm making, these size, takes about two hours to cook because they're so on slow and you don't want them to brown. So you check them and how I check them in about an hour, uh, because it depends on how, how fat your dough is. I go in and I take my fingernail that were, or a toothpick and I just don't want to use a toothpick, I don't poke holes in it, but I use my fingernail and I tap it. If it sounds like that, then it's done, okay? And you do it at the thickest part. If it's still a little gooey and your fingernail goes in there, I leave it in there another, you know, 20 minutes. Check it every 20 minutes. And so you don't want it to brown though. So you want to use the antiquing gel. It's by Delta Home Decor. Uh, you can get it at any uh, craft store or uh, ceramic store. So when we get started on doing this antiquing, what you'll need is a paintbrush, the antiquing gel, a dry towel, and a little water. Okay, so I'm going to just drop some on the plate, add a little bit of water to my brush, and I kind of drop it off to the side, dab into the black, and drop it into this water because you don't, you want it to be pretty runny. You don't want it to paint the, uh, the, the little ornament dark. You don't. So add water. You can add as much water, even if it gets like that. All you want to do is be able to get this into the creases of the uh, ornament. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply just wipe it on. Don't get all freaked out because, oh no, I'm painting it black. You just paint it on. And then you'll notice, look at the color. Isn't that nice? And then you just wipe it off right away. And, and I do a little bit of the body at a time so that it doesn't dry on there. See, look, isn't that cute? You notice now that the, the brown is enhanced more from the stain. Look at the difference in the color of the face. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the whole body. And I try to, these things that I have hanging off the side, I try to keep out of the way. I don't want, the, I don't want to stain those things. So then I just paint it in. And, and I have the word joy. So I want to just make sure I get a lot in there because I want that word to stand out. And then I just kind of paint the whole thing with the stain. And in the mouth, you want to make sure that it's dark in the holes. Wherever, wherever you poke, you can add a little bit more of the black. So now I just take a clean cloth and I wipe it down. Leaving the black in the crevices of where I poked the holes. It looks like it's old and antique and it's got all the, the features drawn out from putting that stain on there. And you want to also put a little bit on the back because you want it to look consistent, you know, you don't want to, oh, it's just the front that's, you know, been antique. You want to make sure that the back is also done up a little bit. You don't have to be so particular about the back. It's okay if it's a little darker. You just wipe it off. You let that dry. See? Okay, this is the little bear that we just stained, and so I'm going to now finish it by putting on Mod Podge. Of course, this had to dry, so you make sure that it dries, and, and I normally wait a little while. It doesn't take long for it to dry. You take a clean brush and the Mod Podge, shake it up, take the brush and generously wipe it all over. It dries clear. And if it looks like you're globbing it somewhere, it doesn't matter. It'll just, it'll dry beautifully. Here is a finished product. It's a matte 
finish so it's not shiny and it's a whole lot nicer and it just looks like clay even though it's dough isn't that cute on the back you can actually write to so and so it can be the area where you write uh, the year made by with a uh, sharpie pen now these little ones I normally also at times have put a magnet right on the head I just stick a magnet on there and I make them for my refrigerator well that is the dough ornaments and I just wanted to conclude by saying I think that you're going to really enjoy making these especially if you have children and if you have any questions or you need any help uh, if you want the instructions definitely give us a call and again the information is at the end of the show